This is the lab solution video for lab 3, Introduction to Orchestration. In labs 1 and 2, we use Docker on our local machine, but what happens when we want to deploy applications to production? There's a number of problems that we need to face, including how to schedule services across distributed nodes, maintaining high availability for applications, implementing reconciliation, etc. There's a number of orchestration solutions out there that can help us solve a lot of these problems, including the IBM's Bluemix container service, which uses the open source Kubernetes to run containers in production. To introduce you to the concepts of container orchestration, we're going to use the built-in container orchestration platform that is provided with the Docker engine called Docker Swarm. Let's get started. Open up a new browser and navigate to playwithdocker.com. Play with Docker is the easiest way to create a multi-node swarm. To create the nodes in your cluster, click the Add New Instance button on the left-hand side three times to create three nodes. Once that is done, click on Node 1 to initialize your swarm using the docker swarm init command. The advertise address flag indicates the network interface that we want this node to listen on for join requests from other nodes. Now, in your other two nodes, node 2 and node 3, copy the docker swarm join command that's outputted to the, the console. Notice that there are little icons that appear in the left hand side. This is a feature in Play with Docker that lets you know that you have nodes that are part of a Docker Swarm. The dark blue icon indicates the, that the node is a manager node, and the icons that are not colored in indicate that the, the nodes are worker nodes. So in this case, we have one manager node, node one, and two worker nodes. If you go back to your first node and run docker node ls, you can verify the nodes in your cluster. Note that all commands that we're going to send to Docker Swarm need to be run on node 1, our manager node. Now that we have our three node swarm cluster initialized, let's deploy some containers. To run containers on a Docker Swarm, we want to create a service, which is an abstraction that represents multiple containers of the same image deployed across a distributed cluster. To start, let's use a simple Nginx example. We'll create a single service with just one running container for now, but we'll scale that up later. Deploy an Nginx service using the docker service create command. This command is declarative, and Docker Swarm will actively try to maintain the state declared in this command unless explicitly changed via another docker service command. This behavior comes in handy when nodes go down because containers will automatically be scheduled on other available nodes. We'll see a demo of that a little bit later on in this lab. The dash dash publish flag makes use of the Swarm's built-in routing mesh. So in this case for Nginx container, we're publishing port 80, and that port is exposed on every node of the Swarm. So when we send a request to port 80 on node 2 or node 3, for example, the routing mesh will take care of routing that request to the appropriate node that's running our container. In our Docker service create command, we're using the dash dash mount flag as a neat trick to have Nginx print out the host name of the node that it's running on. We're going to use this trick in order to demonstrate load balancing. When we have multiple containers of Nginx that are distributed across nodes 1, 2, and 3 in the cluster, we can send requests to the service and see which container and which node is serving that request. We're using the Nginx image version 1.12 here explicitly, and later on in this lab, we will demonstrate a rolling update to version 1.13. Once you created your service using Docker Service Create, you can inspect your service using Docker Service LS. You can check out the running container of the service using Docker Service PS, and then the name of your service, Nginx1. If you happen to know which node your container is running on, you can actually go to the specific node, node 1, 2, or 3, and do a Docker service or a Docker container ls to see that container running on that node. Once our service is up and running, we can go to any node and run curl localhost 80. The routing mesh again will automatically take care of our request 
and route it to the, the single container that's running in either node 1, 2, or 3. From the output of our curl command, I can know that our container is running on node 1, so I can go to node 1 and run docker container ls to see the container running on that node. We successfully deployed a single container for our service, Nginx, but in production we may need to handle larger amounts of traffic, so let's scale our application. We're going to do this by updating our service using the docker service update com command. We'll run docker service update with replicas 5 and then we'll specify the name of our service, Nginx1. As soon as this command is executed, the following happens. The state, of the, the state of the service is updated to five replicas, which is stored in the Swarm's internal storage. Docker Swarm recognizes at this point that the number of replicas that are actually running, which is just one, does not match the desired state of five replicas. So Docker Swarm will schedule four more containers in an attempt to match the desired state for the service. After a few seconds, you should be able to run the docker service ps command to see that docker swarm did its job and successfully started four more containers. Notice that these containers are scheduled across all three nodes of the cluster. The default placement strategy that is used here to decide where new containers are to be run is emptiest node, but that can be changed based on your needs. The publish command 80 to 80 is still in effect for the service. That was not changed when we ran our docker service update command. However, now that when we send requests to port 80, the routing mesh has multiple containers in which to route requests to. So the routing mesh acts as a load balancer for these containers, alternating the containers that serve each request. So we can test this out by running curl localhost 80 like we did before. If you repeat this command a couple of times, You'll notice that each request is going to be served by a different container running on a different node. Another easy way to see which nodes these requests were routed to is to check the aggregated logs. We can run docker service logs and then our service name to print out our aggregated logs. Now that we have our service updated with five replicas, Let's demonstrate a release of our application. We're going to update our version of Nginx to version 1.13. To do this update, we're going to use the docker service update command. And we're going to pass in the dash dash image flag with Nginx 1.13 and then specify the name of the service, Nginx 1. This will trigger a rolling update of the swarm. Quickly type in docker service ps to see their updates in real time. And you can repeat this command over and over to see the rollout of the new containers to being deployed. After a few seconds, your docker service ps command should display that all of the images have been updated to nginx 113. Earlier in this lab, we updated the state of our service using docker service update and we saw Docker Swarm take action as it recognized the mismatch between desired state and actual state and attempted to solve this issue. The inspect adapt model of Docker Swarm enables it to perform reconciliation when something goes wrong. For example, when a node in the swarm goes down, it might take down running containers with it. The swarm recognizes that containers are lost, lost and it will attempt to reschedule containers on other available nodes in the cluster to help achieve the desired state for that service. So let's demonstrate this. For the sake of clean output, let's create a brand new service like we did before. We're going to use Nginx2 as the name so it doesn't conflict with our existing running service. And we're also going to have to change the port to 81. And then we'll add in the dash dash replicas flag um, at the time of service creation, and we'll specify five replicas like we have for the other service. Once we create our service, on node one, run watch to watch the docker service ps command um, in real time. So watch is just a basic Linux utility 
we're passing in dash n to update every second. And this will allow us to watch the reconciliation in action. Now, go to node 3 and run docker swarm leave. This is the nice way to leave the swarm, but you can also outright shut down the node and the following behavior will be the same. Click back to node 1 quickly um, to watch the reconciliation in action. You should see that the swarm will attempt to get back to the declared state by rescheduling the containers that were running on node 3 to node 1 and node 2 automatically. In this lab, we gave you an introduction to problems that you, could, you would come across when running applications in production, such as scheduling service across, services across distri distributed nodes, maintaining high availability, reconciliation, scaling, and logging. We use the orchestration tool that comes built into the Docker engine, Docker Swarm, to address some of these concerns. And that concludes Lab 3. Thanks for watching.